Bless me as I preach this word in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a daysman. We have a mediator. We have reasons to stand our ground and to be courageous. I said this on another subject the other day that we're told in the Bible 365 times. If you go to the Strong's Concordance and count, you will see that I'm telling you the truth. We're told in the Bible 365 times, be not afraid. We're told 25 times in the Bible, be strong. And we're told, we're told at least 26 times to take courage or to be courageous. Anytime you put those ideas together, you see that God is calling for the believers to be people of strength, to be fearless. We're not to lay down and play dead. It's not the will of God that preachers fold like cheap tents, that saints cower in fear, that we run, we tuck tail and run. Is the will of God for believers to be strong and to stand on God and declare for the Lord I'll live and for the Lord I'll die. However long I live, praise the Lord. And when I die, I'm going home to be with the Lord. One of the things that the Lord told me to tell you so that you, that it would encourage you to stand before him and to stand with him, God said, Patrick, remind them that they have something that Job didn't have. Tell them that they know something that Job didn't know. So you got to remember, Job lived before Moses. Before there was a law, Job lived. Before there was organized Judaism, Job lived. The, time, the book of Job takes place during the age um, before the prophets came along. Amen. And uh, before Moses and before Elijah before David, before any of them, uh, the book of Job dates back to a time where the doctrine and the goings on of God and how God dealt with men was not formulated uh, to the point, uh, to the degree that we have it. Job had no idea that that was a conversation that took place in heaven. Job, like his three friends, actually believed that if a man lived right and did right, um, good things would come his way, and if a man didn't, bad things would come his way. And that was basically the guide and principle in those times. Now, we do know with Job's limited theology that Job did quite well with what he knew. How do we know? Because God endorsed him. God called Job, number one, his servant. Number two, the Lord said that he was a complete man, perfect. Said he dodged evil and did that which was good. So, uh, I, you know, I, I'd like to get that endorsement from God today. So that, that was quite an endorsement, right? To get God to say that about you. And yet, there are things that Job simply did not know, that he was not aware of. And here we are in an age where the doctrine is complete. We have the complete Christian doctrine in our laps, in our hands. The Bible, all that God is going to give us in terms of how to get from earth to glory that he's going to give us until Jesus come, it's contained in the Bible. We are closed canon believers. We believe that the canon, the scripture, is complete. Anyone who comes up with additions to the Bible and, or any book that they hold on an equal par with the Bible, we ceremoniously dismiss. We, we drop that. We, our response is, that's the devil. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We already know that there will, there will be some truth in it. There's some truth in every lie. You know, rat poison is only two to three, maybe four percent poison. The rest of it you can eat. Just take that little though to kill you dead. So the devil knows how to, to, to get you. As believers, this is why we don't believe in Oprahism. Oprah's God is a female. We praise the Lord. Y'all not clapping now. 
Now, you shouldn't have said anything about my girl. I don't care if she's your mother. She's wrong. She's wrong. She's wrong. And if she don't get right, she's going to hell. Praise the Lord. You know, the, the Lord will show you up. Bill Gates and Melinda all the, down there giving shots to all them black kids. All over the world. The man acting like he's an expert in vaccines. Ask Melinda. Look at this. God done put them on front street. They're breaking up. And uh, somebody's leaking stuff. That the man been on Jeffrey Epstein's uh, Lola, what, Lolita? Lolita Express. That plane that they fly on and do all kinds of things in the air. Now, that's who you're going to get your, uh, who, it funds Tony Fauci. That's who you're going to get your vaccine information from. Preach wouldn't. Boy, they're going to come after me after a while. Hey, at least I told you while I could. <laughs> yes. Um, this is the world. And, and this is the way uh, uh, they function. Are you following me? So, back to the doctrine. We, we have a complete, we, we don't accept anything. We don't accept Oprahism. We don't accept Fauciism. Uh, and this is not to say that you take a shot or you don't take the shot. That's up to you. It's your business. I, I mean, that's, that's, everybody's grown. But what I am saying, when it comes to our beliefs, this is why I, I've never been for, I'm not, I'm not a big fad person, faddish preacher, you know, Christian yoga. You're going you're gonna to bring an Eastern religion where each move, each, each move, each, each position is the summoning of a demon. And, and, and by the way, men, that favorite position where they sit uh, with their hands like that and on, the, on their bottom with their knees up, legs crossed like that, that one's designed to get the, them demons to come up in you. So go, go when service is over and sit down. After a while, you're going to come to church all feminine and every, people wonder what happened. The devil got in you. And, and you got it on the yoga mat. Most people won't tell you that. Most people won't tell you that. But I'm, I'm right. Am I right? Oh, well, we've studied it extensively. Uh, Dr. Foss did a tremendous presentation on it. On what all them positions, down with dog, up with dog, dog. All of those are positions that summons demons. And there you go because you saw him doing it on Good Morning America. You saw him doing it on the Today Show. You mock what you see without trying to find out what's behind any of this. In the name of being with it, you're missing it. Saints laying there taking our acupuncture. All the stuff mixed in ancient Chinese secrets. All these things we're mixing into the faith. We done brought in all the sororities and the fraternities. We got all of ours. Why don't we just go on and bring in the gangs while we're at it? All this stuff. Mixing it with the doctrine. Mm -mm. God have called us to keep the doctrine pure. God have called us to keep the doctrine holy. See, Job did not have what we have. We have, you have in your lap the greatest document, the greatest book ever put together, watched over by God himself. Praise God. It answers all questions. Ne there will never be a situation in life that the Bible will not speak to. And it is more current than tomorrow morning's newspaper. Job didn't know that he actually did have a daysman. Daysman. Daysman comes from a, a Hebrew word that means uh, to, it literally means to dispute with someone. To dispute, to argue. A daysman is a mediator. 
daysman is, to put it short, a daysman is what Jesus called the Holy Ghost. Jesus called the Holy Ghost the paracletes, a lawyer. A daysman is a lawyer. Someone who will argue. Someone who's qualified to argue your case before God. God called for one of the most popular uses of the word, of the Hebrew word that gives us the term daysman, the English term daysman is found in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, where Isaiah says, come and let us, here's the word, reason together. Daysman, come and let us talk this out. Come and let us argue this out. Come and let us present our story. God calls Zion. Said we need to talk. Come and let us uh, reason together, saith the Lord. And God says, though, look at this, uh, you need to let me talk with you. Uh, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God says, if you come and talk to me, let us talk this out. Uh, your sins, though they be red like dye, they shall be white as snow. And then God says, if you just, dis you just display the inclination and the right disposition uh, toward me, I will bless you. He says, and if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you're unwilling, but if you refuse and rebel, if you, if you are defiant, he says, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. Then God asks the question, how is the faithful city become a harlot? Says it was once full of judgment. That is, justice used to be in you, Judah, and righteousness lodged in you, but now murderers. He says, given your condition, come and let us talk. The God of the Bible is saying to America, saying to black America, as we side with BLM, as we side with Marxists, as we side with people whose God is not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is saying, come, let's talk. Let's talk. We need to talk this out. We need to argue this out. Are you following me? You, you, we need to come together uh, uh, and uh, like a daysman, you, we need to have a mediation. Are you following me? The truth is, here's something that Job didn't know. Job actually did have a daysman. And we have a daysman. The Bible says in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2 and verse 5, I'm almost there. It says, for there is one God and one mediator, one reconciler, one daysman between God and men. Who is that daysman? The man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. He did to be testified in due season. That is, the story of Jesus should be told every chance we get. And then I heard Paul say, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. He says, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, I'm a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity, in faith and truthfulness. We have today, God said, tell the saints that they have a daysman. They have somebody who will argue 
on their behalf. The prophet Isaiah, years after Job was dead and gone, as the doctrine began to formulate, prophesied in chapter 53 and verse 12, he said, therefore, I will divide him, speaking of the Messiah, the daysman, Jesus Christ, a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. The great are the saints. The strong are the believers who stayed with the Lord. Saints, we have so much to look forward to. We have so much to be excited about. Oh, forever with Jesus, we have so much to be excited about. He's going to divide the portion with the great and divide the spoil with the strong because he have poured out his soul unto death. And look at this. Speaking of the Messiah, he was numbered with transgressors. And he bare the sins of many. And look at this. And made intercessions. Made intercessions for the transgressors. Jesus didn't just intercede for the saints, but he interceded for the transgressions. The transgressors. Luke's gospel chapter number 23 gives us an example of this. Uh, Watch this. I just want to show you some things here. In chapter 23, we see where Jesus made intercessions in verse 34. He said, Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Look at Jesus. While dying, he makes intercessions for the transgressors. And then he looked at one of the transgressors who was up there who said to Jesus, in verse 41, we indeed justly, for we receive due reward of our deeds, but this man have done nothing wrong. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus made intercessions for this transgressor. And he said unto him, verily I say unto thee, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Isn't that wonderful? Even Jesus, well, praise the Lord, not only did he make intercessions for the transgressors, but he made intercessions for the saints. And I'll show you that in a moment, but an example of it is where the Lord said to Peter in chapter number 22 of Luke, verse 31, our Lord said to him, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But look at this. I have interceded. I have prayed for you. Good God Almighty. I pleaded for thee. That thy faith fail thee not. And uh, I want to tell you. Uh, Jesus said I believe in my prayers. Because you're going to make it back. <laughs> he said and when thou art converted. <laughs> strengthen thy brethren. Isn't that something? said, Satan sought and obtained permission to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith fail you not. And then I heard Paul when he picked it up in Romans chapter 8. And in verse 29, he said, likewise, the spirit helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I'm glad to know that the Holy Ghost intercedes on my behalf. And when the Holy Ghost is talking to the Father, he uses words, groans, which are beyond human words. I don't know the language between God and the Holy Ghost. English can't cover it for its groanings which cannot be uttered. You see, somebody said, well, that's talking, speaking in tongues. Well, it can't be because tongues are uttered. Tongues are spoken. Groanings which cannot be uttered. That's a heavenly language. Between God the Father and God the Spirit, 
on behalf of us. And then I heard him, he didn't even stop there. He says, and he, speaking of Christ, that, that searcheth the hearts, know what is the mind of the spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints. That is, he contends, amen, and pleads for the saints according to the will of God. What's going on here? God the Son and God the Holy Ghost contends with God the Father on our behalf. And when we're going through and the devil is trying to destroy us, and we're going against all the things that we're facing now. We have a daysman who speaks to God on our behalf. And Paul concludes by saying, and now we know that all things worketh together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. What are the all things that work together? The all things are the Holy Ghost, the groanings which cannot be uttered and it's the mind, it's Christ searching the mind of the spirit and they're coming together on our behalf. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Isn't it a wonderful thing to know that God is with us? And somebody said, well, Jesus is in heaven. He's gone now. How can he make intercession? The Hebrew writer said in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25, he says, Wherefore, speaking of Jesus, he is also, he is able also to save to the utmost them that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for the saints. I'm glad that Jesus is alive forevermore and he's speaking to God the Father on my behalf. And I want to tell you today that Lord's told me to stop by and tell you to get all excited because no matter what the devil tries to do, you got somebody working on your behalf who will intercede and I'm glad to know that he intercedes whether we pray or not he speaks on our behalf whether we know it or not because a lot of things that go wrong we're not aware of those things but nothing get past God and as society tries to close the doors on the Christian church. They try to close the doors on the saints. They're making up terms, words like vaccine hesitancy. That's not a legitimate term. You just heard of that a few days ago. What are they doing? They're making up words and terms and they're testing them to see how they can get people to do what they want people to do. Well, I'm here to tell you that God the Holy Ghost is aware of all of it and he will speak to you and let you know what you should or should not do. And I'm here to tell you today in my clothes, the Lord said, there have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation whether you pray for it or not with the temptation he will provide a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. He told me to tell you that the Lord will, the Lord has already made a way. You just keep living holy. 
you keep standing for Jesus because there is somebody in heaven speaking for you and speaking for me when the devil knocks us down or when we get afraid Jesus is there interceding saying father mother Martin that's my child she's covered in my blood father sent an angel to bring her out father when when you're going through Jesus knows how why you're sleeping you may not even know what's going on in the world but the daysman he never sleeps he never slumbers he never fails on the job he knows how to say father father Pete is carrying a heavy load it's almost about to get the best of him I know him he can take just a little more and you may not have even prayed to God but the Lord will send away have you ever felt like you could go no father and then out of nowhere a blessing came out of nowhere doors flung open out of nowhere it worked out what happened your days been your days been he's been praying for you your days been he's been in a seating your days been he's been talking on your behalf you ought to thank God for your days been yeah yeah Lord it Ah, Jesus! Ah, Jesus! Somebody wave both hands and say it's all right now. It's all right now. Yeah! The going gets rough. The going gets tough. But I know that I can make it because the Lord is on my side. The Lord is holding my hand. I got somebody up there calling my name, praying for me, praying for my family, praying for my children, praying for my son, praying for my daughter, praying for my church, praying for my wife, praying for my grand. Yeah! Oh, ah, the Lord is on our side. Say yeah! Yeah! Woo! Gotta wave both hands and say never! Never alone! Never! Never alone! He promised! He promised! Never! Ah, to leave me! Never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Yeah, yes, Lord. Whoa, Job, Job, Job. Job knows now that he had a daysman. He knows that there was somebody talking for him. Because by the time that I'm done, we get to chapter 16. We find Job. We find his faith growing. He said in 16 and 19, also now, behold, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. My friends scorn me, but my eyes Hallelujah, pour out tears unto God. Hallelujah, I can call on him and he'll hear my cry. I can call on him and he'll help me because I got somebody 
go to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got somebody. Oh, Lord, I've got somebody who will keep me. Job said in 19 and 25, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that he liveth and that he shall stand at the latter end. Good God, at the latter day upon this earth. And I like this. He said, and though after my flesh, after my skin, worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself and not mine eyes, and mine eyes shall behold and not for another, though my reins be consumed within me. Though I am broken down, though I'm going through, yet I'm going to see God. Yet in this body, I'm going to see God. Because I know that my Redeemer, do you know your Redeemer? I know that my Redeemer. See, some of y'all act like you don't have no Redeemer. Woo! Yoda, Yoda. While, while the storm, y'all said through the rage of a storm, he's my rooftop through the rage. Is that rage? Through the rage of the storm, he's my rooftop. So that means uh, uh, while the storm is storming, I'm going to serve him. That means why whatever's going wrong is wrong. You're not waiting for the storm to end, but in the midst of it. That's when you declare you're going to serve it. Well, how about right now in the midst of the storm? You ought to give him a praise. In the midst of the storm, you ought to lift those hands. Tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. I can, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Who's going through something in here? You can do it, you ought to do it. And don't, don't do it for me. Do it till you get your breakthrough. Do it until you feel something. Do it until the power of God. Woo! All of us have to deal with disappointing things. All of us have to deal with things that we would rather not. All of us get news sometimes that can hurt your heart. But I want to know who in here can, while in the midst of it all, can tell the Lord, God, you're wonderful. God, you're mighty. God, I praise you. God, I'm going to serve you. God, I'm going to love you. God, I'm going to give you glory. No matter how, no matter what, no matter when, no matter where, you are my God. You're my peace. You're my song. You've also become my salvation. You're my daysman. You're my way maker. You're my company keeping a lonely hour. And I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And why are you telling him that? You ought to tell your feelings. You might well come on and go along with me because this is what I'm getting ready to do. And while your feelings are trying to sit there, you go on and praise him anyhow. After a while, your joy will come back. After a while, peace comes back. After a while, something starts moving on the inside because you find out that you're not going to let the devil win because he's one. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hey. Hey. He's worthy. That's right. Woo. Get your joy. Get your praise on. go along with me flesh you may as well go along with my born again spirit broken heart you may as well go along with my saved heart I'm gonna praise him I'm gonna serve him because he is my parent
paracletes, my lawyer, my daysman. He's interceding on my behalf right now. And if it hadn't ended, that means I'm able to take it because when it gets too heavy and I can't go any further, he'll send deliverance, he'll send deliverance. So if it's happening to you, if it's taking place, that means you can handle it. That means you still have power. You're still able, able.
Get your blessing. Get your blessing. somebody. You're not alone. The Lord God is with you. You are not alone. You are not alone. Hey! You're not alone. Lord God is with you, and you are not alone. You are not alone. Hey, you are not alone. Lord God, Lord God is with 